everyone welcome to my channel welcome back if you are not new today i'm going to be going over how i got into yale university and while i would love to include what my reaction video is i didn't think i was gonna get in so i didn't record anything but it went something like this so in this video, we are going to be going over my acceptance, my grades, my APs, my extracurriculars, and a little bit of my essay and my essay writing process. Before we get into it, I just wanted to send out a disclaimer, okay? A quick disclaimer. One, this is not made to discourage anyone or to brag or to gloat about my acceptance. I kind of just want to share this information so that you can be inspired because to be honest, I didn't think that my application was all that special. I really applied because I think ninth grade me would have been really disappointed if I didn't apply to an Ivy. So I did it just to fulfill that like inner childhood moment. But this is not to discourage you or to say you need to have this grade in this class in order to get into Yale because I'm not an admissions officer. And to give you guys a little bit of a more diverse view on what an accepted student looks like, I asked my friends who got into Ivy's and Yale as well, what were their grades, extracurriculars, and all that good stuff. So now let's just get into the video. So 2023's Yale acceptance percentage was the lowest of all time. It was 4.38%, which either meant that a lot more people applied or they accepted a lot less people. You guys can take that as you will. I didn't do the research on it. I was lucky enough to be given one of those early acceptances on December 15th with all of the other early applicants. So the difference about Yale's early application is that when you apply, you have to confirm that you are not applying to any other Ivy League and only Yale. So it is a Yale specific early application and that means that hey if I apply to Yale I can't apply anywhere else and that's exactly what I did so I applied to Yale early I submitted my application I think like a week before the deadline because I'll tell you guys about my writing supplement process a little bit later but I had enough time to submit early I submitted my application early and on December 15th I forgot it was Ivy Day so um so I have a full ride to Yale University, and that is because Yale University is a need-based institution, meaning that if you need all $80,000, they will give you all $80,000. And I needed all $80,000, so they gave me all $80,000. So it doesn't mean that my application was any better than anyone else's. They help who needs help, and they don't help who doesn't need help. And I think that that's actually a really nice thing that Yale does to give opportunities for everyone. So now that we got my acceptance out the way, we are going to go into my transcript i have a copy of it right here this is the copy of my transcript like no joke all my grades are here and i'm just going to read it to you i'm going to tell you pretty much what my averages were in each subject and then i'm going to tell you what courses i took and my cumulative average now this doesn't mean that you need to take all these classes i did on this piece of paper in order to get into yale university i have friends who did not take any of the same classes as me and they still got in um so just don't worry about that but if you guys wanted to know here's the information for you all right so i took two years of basic english which means that i just took like english 9 and english 10 in my freshman and sophomore year and my average for that was a 98.67 in both my freshman and sophomore years combined now in social studies for my freshman and sophomore year i took global history and ap world world and my average in that was a 99.25 i basically got a 99 in both of my regular global history and my ap world or my global history too i took i didn't take regents because it was covid so it's okay but i finished that with a 99.25 then i took algebra in middle school and then i took geometry and algebra 2 at my high school and my average in math was a 97.50 and i took french for three years because i had to take three years of language because in middle school i did not pay attention to my spanish teacher and i'm so sorry but i took french for all three years and i took my load in june of last year and i finished with 100 in that class for each year so i have 100 in language then i took art and music over the summer because it's one of the school programs that my school offers and i finished that with a 98 average because i got a 98 in art and a 98 in music though i think that i deserved a 100 in art but my art teacher was like and I was like, no, no, no. But it was over Zoom, so I guess it's subjective. But yeah, I finished with a 98 in my electives courses. 
Then all four years of phys ed, I got a 100 because it doesn't get averaged into your score. So it's a pass or fail class in New York City. I don't know how they do it in other places. So I finished with 100 in gym. I doubt that they look at it, but if you guys wanted to know. Then I took leadership and I've been in leadership for all four years of my high school career. I got into leadership in the summer or like the spring of my freshman year. So I've been in leadership for all four years and it's a pass or fail class. I passed so I technically I have 100 average. I don't know if you guys count this but leadership is um, a program at my school where we plan events for the school and we meet with the administrators to instill change or to enact change into our school. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been in leadership and that greatly, I guess, boosted my transcript because as you can see, it's pretty bland. Now you guys are probably wondering, where are her APs? She listed no APs in the history of this transcript. And that is because I wanted to put that in a different section so that I can tell you all APs that I took throughout my high school career so you guys have a better view of what it looked like and where I placed them. Because I do know that there's a lot of sophomores and even freshmen trying to take APs, but trust me, you don't need them to make it to the Ivies. And my story will tell you that right now. So, for one, I only took eight APs in my four years of Bronx Science, that's the school I go to, my four years of high school, eight APs, and I only took one AP sophomore year, and that was AP World, and if you are a freshman watching this video, AP World is the easiest AP you can take, as long as you know how to memorize things, you'll pass, you'll do perfectly fine. Now, I'm going to just go into the rest of them, so that was what we have seven left and i'll tell you guys what my final averages were in each so i'm better at humanities than i will ever be at stem so a lot of my classes are humanities based so keep that in mind now my first ap that i took other than ap world which was in my junior year was ap u.s history and just like ap world if you can remember things you will pass i finished ap u.s history with a 99 in his class then i took ap lang ap lang is ap language and composition and it was an easy class i loved ap lang because it taught me a lot about structuring my sentences and making sure i can understand the arguments within other people's arguments if that makes sense which is a crucial skill that you use for college and beyond so i finished my ap lang course with a 100 in his class and it was in person so there's really no grade inflation here i just really liked ap comp or ap lang and now we are going to be going into my senior year ap's i took five ap's as a senior which may seem ridiculous but that's because technically i only took three in my first three years of bronx science so i put them all in my senior year because now i'm a senior and i'm older and i know how to survive them and while it seems intimidating five ap senior year has been super chill for me like i've been calm like i have enough time to be recording a like 30 minute youtube video which is going to be cut down to like five minutes um so just keep that in mind that it is doable and it is possible despite what people may say to you so now i'm taking ap biology ap psychology ap calculus bc i'm taking ap literature and what's the last one ap macroeconomics how can i fit how did i forget economics and i'm going into econ i don't know but those are my five that i am taking this year and I cannot tell you what my final averages are because I'm currently still taking these classes. So I only took eight and the average of my APs or like the final average of my APs for the actual courses itself is a 97 in all of my AP courses. Now for my AP test for the three that I actually took, I got a five on all of my AP tests, but that's because it's really not that hard if you put your mind to it. And I'm not, I did not take any STEM classes and the STEM APs are where it's really hard. So I will say that taking humanities APs and getting fives on them really did boost my application because I had fives on all my APs that I took even if they were a little bit easy. Now we are going to be going into my extracurriculars because I am a well-rounded student or at least I hope so. So like I said I'm in leadership and that also counts as an extracurricular because leadership plans events and things that happen outside of school on our own time. So even though it is a class it's a ninth period class at my school you still have to leave the building and do work for cabinet or for leadership and so i counted that as an extracurricular on my application so that was a huge time commitment for me and then in junior year i was elected the director of operations in leadership or on the student government and so i had a leadership position in that extracurricular 
then I was also in Maru Yuan. I've been in Maru Yuan for four years, all four years of my high school career. That I love Maru Yuan and I'm so glad that it gave me talking skills and the confidence to sit in front of a camera uh, and talk to myself for long periods of time. And I did have a leadership position. I was the general assembly director or general assembly co-director because there's two of us. And so again, that did help my application. And then other than that, I babysit for 40 hours a week. So I didn't really have time to do sports or, you know, clubs or get seize club leadership opportunities because I'm a babysitter. I babysit my little brother who you probably have heard in the background of several of my videos and he plays a big role in my life so I made sure to include that because if you are a babysitter that counts. And then I was also in the student diversity committee promoting diversity in my school and I actually worked for two years of my high school career making money so that also counts as extracurricular activities if that's what you were wondering. And now what everyone's been waiting for my essays. Now I'm not going to read you my essays because I'm definitely afraid that someone will plagiarize my essay and then I'll go to jail. Now I know that's exactly not how it works because like hello but I'm just afraid of that and so for safety's sake I will not be sharing um, my full essays with random people on the internet but what I will do is tell you guys the topic structure and other things that I wrote in my essay that really made my essay stand out to my college counselors as well as my peers who pray read them here's how I structured my essays I started with the main theme and topic and its meaning then I went into a story and then I went into the impact now this seems a little bit weird for people because you don't really want to say the theme of your story at the beginning but I did and all of my essays that I wrote for all of the colleges that I applied to all two <laughs> I made sure that I said the meaning of my story in the beginning now this doesn't mean you have to do that but that's just how I like to structure my stories and it gave people an insight on why I was telling the story that I was telling so that I didn't leave people's attention so I wrote about my little brother and the lessons that he's taught me through asking questions and if I just told that story with no introduction I probably would have lost the readers attention so I started off with the main theme then the story and then its impact on me and a big thing that my college counselor told me when writing your essays is to make sure that you tie that impact back into yourself but not only how it impacted you but how it has changed you and what you will do in the future you want to make sure your readers know that you're not going to stay the same person forever they want a dynamic person a person who's capable of changing because you're not at your peak right now I mean you're probably like 13 years old we are not at our peak so we have to keep going and we have to show our readers that yes this has changed us, but how will it change us and what will we change about ourselves? And then for the class of 2024, here's an even more important thing to add to your essay. We did have a COVID impact section. Now, if COVID didn't impact you in a direct way, like it didn't really, you didn't lose a family member or you didn't lose a job, then of course you're probably like, what in the world do they want me to write there? And I use that section to show how I changed through COVID. It does give you an extra push on your essay because then you can tell people a little bit more about yourself. I wrote that COVID made me see the world in a new light and not one that's like, wow, everything can change in an instant. No, not that type of new light. It taught me the value of education and I wrote that in my COVID impact essay. Now, if you have no impact, like if COVID had you chilling in your house, which I doubt it did, then don't write anything. But for the people who kind of changed during COVID, I doubt all of you stayed the same. I would say that for the class of 2024, use that section to tell the reader, to tell the viewer everything about yourself. Hopefully this helps you on your journey, especially if you are an underclassman trying to figure out what are you going to do? I really want to get into the Ivy Leagues. I don't know what classes to take. Hopefully this kind of you know calmed you down and made you relax. College is not like defining of you. It's what you do after college that defines you. You can go to any college and you'll be perfectly okay. But I know a lot of you guys are not gonna listen to me until after you get into college. So why am I giving you this information? But that about does it for me. I covered all of the things that I wanted to cover in this video. I even wrote a little script to make sure I did cover all the things I wanted to cover in this video. You can check the description for more information about other people that got into Yale. I went around asking people who got into Yale and other Ivy Leagues to please send me some information about their application so that I can give it to you and that's in the description below. So if you like this video, please 
please please please like the video like press the like button because it helps me a lot i got a lot of people who watch my videos but not a lot of people who like them which is kind of mean and if you have any questions and i mean any questions at all please leave a comment below i will answer them like i will like scroll and answer all your questions because i really want to help you guys get into the college of your choice <sighs> a lot of words i just said now i'm going to edit this 30 minute video and catch you guys next time bye everyone